When it comes to the legalization of cannabis, we are about to see marketing efforts ramp up aimed at shifting public opinion and destigmatizing current notions associated with its use. Here to explain that is Alison Gordon, the CEO of 48 North Cannabis, and according to Marketing Magazine, one of the country's top 10 marketers. Welcome back. Thank you very to much. What she said, Alison. Thank you very much. Who is the new face of cannabis? Me? No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, I, I don't know that there is a new face of cannabis. Who would we like to have people see as the face of cannabis? I think really the goal for me is that people understand that there is no one face of cannabis. So historically, over the past however many years in popular culture, you see a lot of rappers. Maybe there's the thought of hippies. Now we're starting to see more and more faces as lots of stories are getting out there, whether it's young children with epilepsy or whether it's your mother who's using it for back pain. I think we're all starting to see that the face of cannabis is actually changing. Well, we're hearing a bit about the pinking of cannabis. I take it that's right. aimed at women. Yeah, no, I haven't heard that term yet, which is quite interesting coming from a background of having worked for years in breast cancer. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, a lot of different, There's a, let's put it this way, the industry is huge. We all see all the time tons of stuff happening in the cannabis industry, the stock market's going crazy. Mm -hmm. So everybody wants to cash in on this, what they see as a trend, which it's really, really not. So one of the issues we hear about a lot is women and who's targeting women and who's talking to women. And it will be interesting to see because we still are in this medical system uh, governed by our federal government and Health Canada, and we aren't actually allowed to market to anyone. So I'm very curious to see how this so-called pinking of cannabis will turn out. Is cannabis culture not currently female-friendly? Well, I think that, hmm, that's an interesting question. Um, you know, over the past four years that I've been working in the industry, I've gone to a lot of different industry events in the U.S. There's something called the Cannabis Cup, and it takes place in California, in Colorado, there's probably about five, 10,000 people that are there. And there's a mix of men and women, but it is predominantly men, young men. And a lot of the women that work in the booths are typical that you see in bikinis or shorts. So there is this stereotypical thing happening at some of these events. That said, I personally know a lot of women who are cannabis users. So I think there is room in the culture for women. I think there are lots of women in the culture, but maybe it hasn't sort of rising to the level of the magazines or the booths or where we can see sort of that equality of women to men. So what would be the main areas of use when it comes to women? I mean, are we that different from men in what we would use cannabis for? No, I don't, I don't think so at all. I think actually if you go on Instagram and you do Google hashtag 420 girl or 420 woman or weed women, or there's a whole bunch of hashtags you could try, you'll find a brevy of women of all ages, grandmothers. I was looking at a grandmother's <laughs> site the other day on Instagram. She was smoking a massive bong and talking about her grandchildren. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think that, that no, women and men use cannabis for all sorts of reasons. And I don't think that there's any mm. particular gender associated with it. How do you hope to change the perception of cannabis culture? And the consumers associated with it. Right. I mean, for me, I think as a recreational cannabis user myself, I've always felt like it was something you kind of had to hide from maybe your work colleagues or family members. And it's really only in the past few years that I've realized, okay, hold on, you're working in this industry, you're talking about changing perception, it's time to come out of come the closet, out of the closet. exactly yeah. come out of the box and say like here i am a mom fully functional i you know run a business and i use cannabis recreationally so i think at the very basic level it's a very complex question but if we're going to keep it simple the idea really is to say these are not just as i said maybe for rappers or hippies or people who are counterculture it's really around us everywhere yeah. for me um it's Something that instead of, I mean, a lot of people come home and they have a drink mm -hmm. and like they don't have, uh, for various reasons, we generally don't drink at home. But, um, you know, 
to have it for a relaxation and to take me into the evening, I'd be quite happy to to have a joint as opposed to having a martini. That would be my choice. Right. And I think with some of the options that will become available as we move into the recreational market, like vape pens, for example, where you don't have that smell or mm-hmm. you're not having to roll something and keep things around if you have children. So there's a discretion with the vape pen. It doesn't really smell. I think you're finding a lot more younger moms, for example, or as they call them, soccer moms, are saying, okay, this is actually something I can do, get through the soccer game, mm-hmm. get through the homework period. And I agree with you. It's really no different than having a glass of wine. But all pot is not created equal. And so can you take us through the various strains, what they can, the difference between right. a, 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 sativa. a sativa and an indica? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, if we had hours, we could get into all the intricacies. There's thousands of different cultivars or strains, although some say there's really only 12. So, you know, it's a hot button thing. But yes, there is two basic plants in the cannabis family, the indica and the sativa. So the indica is what we generally associate with the stereotypical stoner relaxed into the couch, watching Mm -hmm. a movie. It's helpful for sleep. Um, And sativa, some call the daytime cannabis because it can help with creativity. It doesn't make you as tired. Some people find that it makes their heart race. And what I find really fascinating is I see the people's learning curve has just gone way up. So I find friends telling me, oh, I like to smoke this indica mixed with a little bit of sativa. So it doesn't make me too tired, but it doesn't make my heart race. So people are actually starting to make their own blends and figuring out which cultivars work well for them. And it's an amazing time we're living in, honestly. How do you answer people who who say that it's going to become another problem? Like tobacco. Like tobacco um, and and booze. Well, I mean, there's, again, complex. Uh, It's not something new. So it's not, and if it were to be a problem, which I don't agree that it is, then one would say it's out there. I mean, this is not something that's difficult to get. If you want to get marijuana right now, Mm -hmm. you can get it very easily. So legalization doesn't change that. What it does change is your ability to know what it is you're getting. So 48 North, uh, my company, we are regulated by the government. Therefore, all of our product is tested and you know exactly what's in it. So when I tell you the THC levels and the CBD levels, you can feel confident knowing that we're governed by Health Canada. We have spot testing. We have to batch test um, all of our product. So you have a sense of what's actually in what you're getting as well as there's no pesticides allowed. And so there's just more information, but it's not as though this is a new thing that we're creating. This is just creating a different access for people. And I think that will create less of a problem because you don't have people going out onto the street buying whatever it is they're buying. Yeah, and, and also, as, as you mentioned, there, there are different strains with different levels of THC, exactly. which is what um, you know would get you stoned. And then the CBD, which doesn't, which can just help ease pain, anxiety. We saw wonderful things with Charlotte's Web, mm-hmm. um, the strain that helped Charlotte yes. with her, her seizures, which turned Dr. Sanjay Gupta around exactly. from CNN. Like he was very anti pot and now he's like seen it research yep. it and he's like I, i'm all for this no there's there's more those are just two cannabinoids out of at least 80 to 100 mm. cannabinoids that are in the plant so we'll be discovering more and more about those different cannabinoids and what they do for sure but yes legalization and having that type of access will help people to better understand what works for them and what they want to use. And I mean, it's totally different than alcohol and I hate even making the comparison, but when people talk about, you know, moonshine or bootleg versus when you go into the LCBO now and the breadth of choices that you have, you have a different sense of what's really strong, what's less strong, what you like, what works well with you. I don't like to, again, equate the two, but same, same. You're going to have those choices and you're going to be able to make educated decisions. So how can people connect with you? What's your web- website? Our website is 48northmj.com or they can Google 48 North Cannabis Co. and they can find our website. Well, thank you very much for, for coming in and enlightening us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> what she said, we'll be right back on 105.9 The Region. Well, she said- Magical, mystical, or a powerful wonder girl. 